Hey guys, a tough challenge to tackle for new preppers is figuring out what food items are best to start with when you're building up your food preps. To help you tackle this challenge, I'm going to be going over with you some great items you can start off with, and these are some of the items that every prepper should have in their food stores. The first thing that I'm going to be touching on is canned meat. The human body needs fats and proteins, and getting it from meat's a great source. This makes canned meat one of the essential parts to have in your food preps, and they come in a variety to choose from such as tuna, corned beef, chicken, spam, pulled pork, and more. Most canned meats have a best buy date that are several years out, and many will last much longer than that best buy date as long as it's being stored in the proper conditions. I do want to point out that with canned meats in particular, though this is also the case with many other canned items, it's going to be significantly cheaper to purchase the store brands of these, but in most cases, they come out of the same factory or an even similar quality and taste. A good example is this great value corned beef right here. This literally has the exact same stamping. I would almost guarantee you this is coming off the exact same assembly line down in Brazil as some main brands like the Libby corned beef, for example, but these are coming in at about half the price. So I would definitely pick up items like these that are store brands test them out, make sure that you're happy with the quality and taste versus some of the name brands. But again, overall, most of them are gonna come out of the same factory, so that's a good way to save some money and be able to plus up on your preps. The next item that you should have in your food preps is rice. Rice is a staple item in diets all around the world, and it's a great item to have in your food preps. Normally, white rice comes in at about 1,600 calories a pound, and depending on your location, you can pick up a 50-pound bag of rice right now for around 20 bucks, making it one of the cheapest items out there as well for prepping. Another advantage to having rice as part of your preps is it's an extremely long shelf life when stored properly. When rice is stored in the factory packaging, you can usually expect about 18 to 24 months of life, but when stored in an oxygen-free, airtight container in a darker and cool environment, you can easily see la rice last up to decades. The next thing here is pasta. Pasta is another item that is a major staple in many people's diets, and it's similar to rice in that it's another great item that you want to include in your preps, and it's going to be relatively cheap. One pound of pasta also comes in about 1,600 calories, and while that pasta is still going to cost you a little bit more, where it's usually coming in at about a dollar a pound, it still is one of those cheaper items out there that you can add in, and it's a major prepping staple. Pasta is also one of the most versatile ingredients you can have next to rice, and much like rice, when pasta is stored in that factory packaging, you can expect it to last about 24 months, but when you step up and store it in an oxygen-free, airtight container in a dark and cool environment just like that rice, you can easily see pasta last 20 years or longer. The next item we're going to jump to here is dried beans. Dried beans are high in protein, and much like rice and pasta, have shelf lives that can last upwards of 20 plus years when stored in those proper environments like we've talked about. This makes beans a great, cheap option to bulk up in your food store, especially when you're trying to fill in your gaps where you need more things like protein. The next item that we're gonna throw out here is peanut butter. Peanut butter is one of the most calorie dense foods you can buy, and it's a great option to include in your food preps. Normal peanut butter typically is going to have a shelf life dated about two years out, but it can last longer than that Best Buy date. But with peanut butter, you got to be a little bit more cautious than these other items as due to the oils in peanut butter, it can go rancid. So if you're looking for items to store out there much longer than those two years for peanut butter, they do have some great alternatives such as peanut butter powder. The peanut butter powder can have a shelf life of up to 15 years if being stored in the proper environments. So that would be a great alternative to actual peanut butter if you're looking for something like that with the longer shelf life. The next item we're gonna touch on here is potato flakes. A great prepper staple, potato flakes can add some variety to your food preps and are relatively nutritious. Potato flakes in the original packaging, such as these guys right here, are gonna have a shelf life of about one to two years. But when you use those over and store them in some airtight containers, potato flakes shelf life are going to be greatly extended and they can last upwards of 15 years. Potato flakes are a great item to use as a side dish and they're a great source to use as a uh, supplement to your main dishes as well. You can use them as like a thickener and mix them in with things like soup and things like that. Not to mention again, potatoes are a relatively patricious item. The next thing I'm gonna to touch on is canned vegetables. Canned vegetables are a great way to add a ton of variety into your diet, and they're gonna be able to be a great source of vitamins and minerals. Nearly any vegetable you can think of out there comes in a canned format. You know, whether you're talking yams, you're talking carrots, you're talking peas, you're talking beets, 
potatoes, so forth. If it's a vegetable, it's going to be canned somewhere out there where you can get it. Canned vegetables also come in fairly cheap as well, and they typically have a marked buy, best buy date that's about two to three years out, but you guessed it, like other canned goods, they'll actually last significantly longer if properly stored. For example, if you actually look up regarding canned goods like vegetables on the USDA website, even though while you have that best buy date, which is going to be your best quality, it's actually listed on their website even from the USDA that most canned goods, if properly canned and properly stored, could actually last indefinitely. Now, I wouldn't take the choice to be eating canned goods 10 years after expiration if I can avoid it, but that's one thing to keep in mind. So with anything canned, just because it hits that expiration date doesn't mean it's actually going to be bad for you to eat. It's just something to keep in mind that you may not have as much nutritious factor and the food may not be tasting to that top quality anymore, but it's typically still gonna be safe. But I will always throw out there as well, whether it's vegetables, meats, or anything else that's canned, use your best judgment. Now, the next item I'm gonna to touch on is powdered milk. Milk's a major part of many people's diets and it's a vital ingredient in many different items you can cook. Having powdered milk on hand is great for a variety of uses and it's one of the best complete proteins you can actually have on hand. Powdered milk's a shelf stable item that can last years and is easy to mix up and use as long as you have access to water. An added bonus is with the items such as powdered milk, you can keep items like Carnation Instant Breakfast Mixes which you can mix in with the milk. It's gonna bulk up, add more nutritional value to it, add you some protein, and it's going to be a great, delicious morale booster as well, especially if you have younger children and people like that that's in your prepping community. An item like that can make a huge difference on keeping their morale high and keeping their spirits high and keeping them moving through whatever disaster or situation you're encountering. Now, the next thing we're gonna to jump to is baking mixes. Having baking mixes is a great option to keep in your stockpile. Baking mixes allow you to whip up a plethora of different items like biscuits, muffin, pancakes, breads, and more. And you can add in, use these to help add in additional side dishes when you're cooking up. And that's gonna help bulk up your calories and give you more of that nutritional need to get to where the numbers are that you need to be on a daily basis. Now, one thing I do wanna point out specifically when it comes to having things like baking mixes in there, you do have to keep in mind that you do usually need a different method to cook them. So the grid's down, you're not gonna be able to just pop open your oven and toss them in there unless you're running off grid on like a gas stove range system and you have a, a plethora of gas stored. So keep in mind, you do need to explore what options are out there available to you in your area on how you can cook things like that. But it's a great alternative to throw in there and it's gonna definitely help you bulk up your calories and it's gonna add a lot of variety in there because you're eating rice and beans, but at least you can throw some biscuits on the side. That's it's gonna it's gonna help you get along a little bit better and not get so food fatigued so quick. Now, the final major thing that I want to touch on is gonna be spices, condiments, and sauces. Spices and condiments can make a major difference on your food and should never be underestimated, and that's why they make our list here. Many of the foods that are shelf stable and last a long time are very bland to eat without spices and condiments to mix in which could lead again to that food fatigue that I mentioned earlier. Some of them are easy and essential spices to have on your preps would be things like salt, sugar, cinnamon, pepper, onion flakes, and a variety of seasoning salts. Some great condiments to throw in would be things like mustard, hot sauce, buffalo sauce, barbecue sauce, and soy sauce. And you know any sort of other mix-ins that you would want as well, things like pasta sauces, Alfredo sauces, just keep in mind with some of these, particularly the ones with the more acidic, higher, uh, viscosity in them. You gotta be a little bit more cautious on those expiration dates and make sure that they're not compromising their containers if they're stored too long because of that higher acidic value in those sauces. But overall, you want those to be mixed in. You don't wanna be eating plain pasta day after day. If you can mix your pasta in with Alfredo sauce one day, mix it in with some marinara sauce another day, you can take your rice and mix in some soy sauce or you know you mix up some rice and beans and throw in a little buffalo sauce with it. That variety is going to help you survive a lot longer and not get so fatigued. And again, it's a huge morale booster to have those type of things on hand with you. You know, we literally used to fight wars over spices for a reason. So keep that in mind and keep some spices on hand. I know in one of my previous videos it got pointed out I didn't really have them in the video. I do have them. There's a couple examples right here. So definitely get them uh, and keep them on hand. Now, 
The next thing I'm gonna throw out here, and this is kind of my bonus item I wanted to throw out, is make sure you have some canned and bagged meals. Things like cans of soup, chili, you know, beef macaroni like this guy right here. They're gonna be things that you want on hand. Now, they don't really stretch as far when you're looking at those items, uh, you know, but at the same time, they're easy to cook if you have to cook them at all, because to point out, most items that are canned, like soups, chilies, you know, Chef Poyardee type stuff, you can eat them cold. It's gonna be a little bit tastier if you heat them up, but you can actually eat those things cold. They're fully cooked before they're sealed in the can, so it's completely safe in most instances to eat them without heating them up, but it's definitely gonna be tastier if you do. But those are a good bonus item to have on hand, especially if you know, you're know you only one or two people prepping because it's easier to open up those cans to sustain yourself. You don't have to cook up a big batch of anything. So I would definitely have those mixed in with your preps as well. And again, too, when you're going to more of a bagged meal situation, you have things like soup mixes here where I can take this soup mix, I can make it with a 12 and a half ounce can of chicken that's right over here under this corned beef. Mix that together and you got eight quarts worth of soup. You can stretch that a little farther by throwing in your own noodles and stuff like that, but that's a huge advantage. If you're feeding, you know, four or five people, you can do that off that soup mix. And then, you know, you throw in some biscuits, for example, you make some of those up, you know, using an off-grid cooking method. Again, whichever one's gonna be most preferable for you. You can really stretch those food preps out there further. So having little things like that start to add up really quick. And that's where I would be if I was you. I'd be looking into those items that we went over today and, uh, work off of that. And well, I wanna throw this out here as well. Thanks for following through on our list today. If you like the video and you don't mind, definitely hit that like and subscribe button down below. We appreciate it. But most of all though, stay safe and stay prepared.